In a survey conducted by CareerBuilder.com, employers were asked if they had ever sent an employee home because they were dressed inappropriately. A total of 2,765 employers responded to the survey, with 968 saying that they had sent an employee home for inappropriate attire. In a press release, CareerBuilder makes the claim that more than one-third of employers have sent an employee home to change clothes. Do the sample data provide convincing evidence in support of this claim? Test the relevant hypotheses using alpha equal to 0 0.05. For purposes of this exercise, assume that it's reasonable to regard the sample as representative of employers in the United States. So first of all, we need to figure out what type of hypothesis test we're doing here. It says a total of 2,765 employers responded to the survey, with 968 saying that they had sent an employee home for inappropriate attire. So we have 968 respondents saying yes out of 2,765. That's a proportion. It's a single proportion, so we're going to do a one proportion z test. So let's go through the steps for a one proportion z test. First of all, we need to describe the population characteristic. Well, the claim that Career Builder is making is that more than one third of the employers have sent an employee home to change clothes. So our population characteristic is the proportion of employers who have sent an employee home. So let's define P, our parameter here, to be the proportion of all employers in the U.S. who have sent an employee home to change clothes. Next we need to state the null and alternative hypotheses about this proportion P. So we need a null hypothesis and we need an alternative hypothesis. I usually like to start with my alternative and state that one. So if we go back up here, it says Career Builder makes the claim that more than one third of employers have sent an employee home. Here's the key thing here more than one third. That is our alternative hypothesis. Is that P, the proportion of employers in the U.S. who have sent an employee home to change clothes, is more than, greater than, one third. Then we come back and do our null hypothesis, and that is that P then would be equal to one third. After we have our hypotheses stated, we need to choose the significance level alpha. Sometimes the significance level is given to us right up here. Test the relevant hypotheses using alpha equal to 0 0.05. So we can just state down here that we were given alpha equal to 0 0.05. Okay, now that we have those things out of the way here, we can move on and we need to check the conditions or the assumptions that are required for a one proportion z test. First thing we need to check is whether or not we have a random sample. Well we don't specifically have a random sample, it doesn't say that, but it does say for purposes of this exercise assume that it's reasonable to regard the sample as representative of employers in the US. So we would just need to jot down that the sample was not specifically described as a simple random sample, but we're told to assume that it's reasonable to regard the sample as representative of employers in the United States. So that's sufficient for the purposes of this exercise. Next we need to check whether or not the sample is no more than 10% of the population. Well our sample size was 2,765. Now certainly that is less than 10% of the population of all employers in the United States. So we would just write down that the sample size of 2,765 is certainly less than 10% of the total number of employers in the United States. There isn't a lot of employers in the U.S. Next we need to see if we have a large sample size. That's another uh, condition that's required for a one proportion z test. So to check the, this we have these two conditions n times the hypothesized value of p, I call it p naught, we need that to be greater than or equal to 10, and we need n times 1 minus p naught to be greater than or equal to 10. So n is our sample size, which was 2,765, so I'm going to do 2,765 times p naught, the hypothesized value, our null hypothesis was that p was equal to 1 third, and if we 
multiply these numbers together, we get approximately 921.7. That's certainly greater than or equal to 10. n times 1 minus p naught, so 2,765 again. If our hypothesized value was 1 third, then 1 minus that is 2 thirds. Multiplying these together, we get 1,843.3. That also is greater than or equal to 10. So these two things here combined mean that yes, we do have a large sample. Okay, so now that we have all of those things out of the way, we can go ahead and calculate our test statistic. For a one proportion z test, our test statistic looks like this. z equals, we take our st statistic which in this case is a p hat, minus the hypothesized value, I call it p naught. We need to divide that by the square root of p naught, oops, p naught times 1 minus p naught, all over n. So let's come off to the side here and just kind of jot down what we have. Um, let's see, what is p hat? p hat is our sample proportion. It said that we sampled 2,765. And of those sampled, 968 responded yes. So there's our sample proportion. Another thing I see in this formula is p naught, the hypothesized value of p. Going back to our null hypothesis, remember our null hypothesis was that p is equal to one-third. So there's our p naught. And n, again, is our sample size of 2,765. Okay, so putting all of those values into this equation, it's going to look like this. p hat. 968 divided by 2,765 minus the hypothesized value of one-third all over the square root of, I've got a one-third. One minus one-third would give me two-thirds here over sample size of 2,765. All right, I think it's time to pull out our calculator here. Get that pulled up. Okay, so here's how I like to enter this into my calculator. So I'm going to start with the 968 divided by 2,765 minus the one-third. equals. Then I need to divide that by a square root of, and I'm going to use my parentheses here, I've got the square root of one-third times two-thirds, and then that divided by 2,765 equals I'm going to say approximately 1.869. Oops, let me go back there. Okay, let's get my pen here. So we said that was approximately 1.869. So that's our test statistic Z. All right, once we have that test statistic, we need to go ahead and calculate a p-value associated with that test statistic. So to calculate our p-value, it's important to keep in mind what your alternative hypothesis is. So let me just come up here and remind ourselves that our alternative hypothesis, back on a previous slide, was that p is greater than one-third, and that came from this statement right up here, more than one-third of employers. So our p-value then is the probability of getting a test statistic z greater than 
same symbol as our alternative hypothesis here, greater than that 1.869 that we did obtain. So we're going to use our z-table to find this probability. And if you recall, on a z-table, when you look up a value, it gives the area or the probability to the left. So if I want to find the probability or the area to the right, I'm going to have to do 1 minus the probability that z is less than 1.869. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up our table here, and we're going to look up a z of 1.869. Our table isn't quite as precise as that. It only goes to two decimals here, so we're going to round to 1.8 and then over to 7. And I see that that area to the left of 1.87 is 0.9693. So this is 1 minus 0.9683, or in other words, our p-value is 0 0.0307. Let's go ahead and write p-value over here. p-value equals 0 0.0307. So what exactly does this mean? Well, it means that assuming our null hypothesis was true, um, and the null hypothesis was that p equals to one-third. Assuming that's true, this, 0 0.0307, is the probability of obtaining our test statistic of p hat at least as extreme as the one that was actually observed, at least as extreme as this 968 out of 2,765. Well, this probability here is pretty small. So it seems unlikely that our assumption about the null hypothesis is true. So let's go ahead and compare it to our alpha here. We need to make a conclusion with reference to this level of significance alpha. Our alpha was 0 0.05. Our p-value is 0 0.0307. That's less than 0 0.05. It's pretty small. So it seems fairly unlikely that our null hypothesis was true. So we would say that since the p-value of 0 0.0307 is less than alpha of 0 0.05, the data is statistically significant, which means that we reject the null hypothesis. We don't think that p equals one-third. In favor of the alternative, we think that p is greater than one-third. So we actually need to state two conclusions here. We need to state one with their p-value in reference to alpha, and say that we reject H naught in favor of the null or the alternative hypothesis, HA. And then we also need to state a conclusion in the context of the problem. So we're going in favor of HA, the alternative here. Well, what does that mean in the context of the problem? So our conclusion in the context of the problem. So we're said that we're going to go in favor of the alternative hypothesis that p is greater than one-third. Well, remember p was the proportion of all employers in the United States who have told an employee to go home and change clothes. So we say that that is greater than one-third. Let's just write that out. We have convincing evidence that more than one-third of employers in the U.S. have sent an employee home to change clothes. So it does seem that we have evidence to support the claim that CareerBuilder made. 